Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Basics. In last week's episode, episode 15, we had a look at first aid kits and just a really basic first aid kit that you could use for personal cuts and injuries that you might obtain here out in the field. And it's always a really good idea to carry something like that. Even though you have items in your kit that could double up and be used for first aid, things like scarves and cordage and other types of tape and there are natural environments around, having just a small personal first aid kit with you is just essential in most respects. It's the first thing you'll turn to and it's the, uh, the thing you wish you had if you didn't have it. But moving on from that, we're going to start getting out into the field now and, and using a variety of different equipment. Uh, we're going to be moving on to heavy cutting tools and then fire lighting methods and we're actually going to start practicing with natural resources and uh, processing those resources and we'll need our tools to do that. And I think before we move into all of that, a really good thing to cover would be field journals. I have two field journals here. This field journal here is a small pocket field journal that I carry around with me. And the other one is a bit of a larger one that I'm gradually migrating over to. And it's more of like a, a book in most respects that I'm kind of writing in and, and writing about various plants and natural resources. And field journals are really an extension of your mind. Some of us out there have really good memories. I've always got a good memory for things that I'm interested in. Um, but a lot of the time you can forget things and you can often forget experiences that you have. And I think having a field journal is a great way of just having information on you. Books are bulky, they have a lot of information in that you might not want. So taking those books and taking what you do want from them and putting it into a book that's like an extension of your mind is a fantastic way. Of, um, of carrying things in the field that you really need to remember. So I'm going to show you what's in my field journals, just a bit of the information that's in there, just to give you an idea of the kind of things I like to write about. So this is my smaller field journal, this is like a pocket one that I can put in my cargo pocket on my trousers and just carry around with me sometimes but I am migrating over to a larger one that will live inside my pack and it will just be more comprehensive with more detail because the more you learn the more you know about something the more information sometimes you want to write down and it's always nice to record your your interests but if we open this up here this is just a file of facts I got this for about five quid um, it was discounted in a shop although file of facts are very expensive generally so I probably wouldn't recommend them unless you can get them real cheap. But all you want is something with a binder like this. And the reason I have a, a folder like this with a binder is because it allows me to organise information. The problem I find with notebooks that the pages are glued in is sometimes you want to rearrange information because you learn things at different rates. One minute you might be learning about one plant family, the next day you might be learning about another and you write them in as you learn them, but they might not be related in any way. So at a later date, you might wanna organize them into alphabetical order, like I've done here. Or then at a later stage, I could organize these into plant family by just shifting them all around a bit. So it gives you a lot more flexibility on just organization and assembling things in an order that you want them to be in. But you can see we've got alphabetically um, organized pages here. And really this is just for plants. At the moment they're not assembled in plant family, they're just in alphabetical order. We've got their white briny. If we look at that one there, you can see we've got the name, the common name, that is their white briny. And we've got the scientific name. And we've got the actual family. And we've got whether it's a perennial or an annual. So the kind of season span it stretches for. We've got there from, I think it says May to October. And then whether it's poisonous, and this one obviously is, so I've got that written there. So this is really the way I sort of organise a lot of my information. Uh, you can see quite a few plants there. A lot of these are actually poisonous at the moment. Uh, but we've got another one there. This is cuckoo flower. Again, a few illustrations. So we've got the leaf, the upper leaves, the actual flower, the amount of stamens it has. And they're only very, very basic illustrations. They're not works of art, but... They're just enough really for you to look at and just to give you a bit of a visual understanding of, of what you're looking at. But I'll show you the other journal. This is really just a small one and I've, as I've been working out of this I've been sort of removing a few of the pages. But it's easy to make a journal like this. If you have a big sheet of leather, all you've got to do is cut a square out, find the middle, 
punch two holes and then get a cheap binder and get some of those screws you get that you get off like um, holsters and off of uh, Kydex um, sheaths and things and you basically just bolt it in and then you've got an A5 folder that you can write in. This was actually made for me by a company online but I've just put this in because it only had this cord to begin with and you could barely turn a page on it. I've only really just started writing in this one. That's Black Nightshade. You can see a lot of this needs to be gone over in ink to stop it deteriorating over time. So I'm just writing more information, better illustrations of the buds, of the berry, you know, the amount of sepals around the berry there, a better illustration of the leaf. There's Bittersweet. It's quite an interesting one. You see that everywhere at this time of year. Again, just better illustrations of the leaves, of the buds, of the berries, a bit of a better description. And um, yeah, later on these can be these can be organised. And there's white briny. I don't see that very often around here, white briny. Got black briny, a very, very common black briny. See that everywhere, creeping around the hawthorn looking edible and it's not really shouldn't be eating that we got wavy bittercress and hairy bittercress you can see some illustrations there just leaf structure fruits flowers upper leaves always differ to lower leaves all the genus scientific name there whether it's native or not something i didn't include on the other journals so there's always things to add and it's always good to rewrite journals because you do such a better job the second time round and there's Deadly Nightshade. So even though in some people's eyes journals like this will be seen as a very trivial thing in wilderness living skills, you've just got to think about people who have spent you know, their whole life living out in the wilderness. People like Dick Prenike, he spent over 30 years living out in the wilderness um, alone and um, even though you know, he was an incredibly competent person, he recorded his skills in, in many different ways, his experiences and you know people are able to read those um, journals that he's got and actually have a look at his photography and his videography and uh, be inspired by it and it inspires a lot of people to go out and do a lot of different things so I hope that's inspired some people out there it's certainly something that I need to do more right in my journal and I hope you've enjoyed this episode thank you again for watching and I'll see you very soon in another episode take care guys and uh, thank you again